Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going right back to the 60s, 70s, 80s. I'm going to do a, a classic from that time, prawn cocktail, or shrimp cocktail if you don't know what a prawn is. Before we start, a shout out for Leon, who's got his birthday coming up in a couple of weeks and is a bit depressed because of lockdown. I do not blame you. And that was requested by his friend Morgan Taylor. So, happy birthday in advance. Right, prawn cocktail. Now, this is something that used to be massively, massively popular. It was on every menu, everywhere. Um, it was the best thing ever. And then it just fell out of favour and is you know, seldom seen and reviled, ridiculed, uh, not much liked. But during my researches for assorted owl recipes, um, I often see a mention of a certain book, this one, The Prawn Cocktail Years by Simon Hopkinson and Lindsay Barham. And it was published in 1992. It's out of print at the moment, but I did manage to, to get this, find this on uh, eBay for a, a reasonable price. So I bought it and um, I'm not going to cook everything in it, although I actually have cooked about half the things in it already because that's when I come from sort of thing. Uh, but there are, there are a number of recipes in there that I am going to do. So let's start at the beginning, prawn cocktail. And yeah, don't laugh because people like uh, Heston Blumenthal, Jamie Oliver, they secretly love this stuff. They like to rummage in the fridge for it when, when they're at home. Um, so that's cool. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share it, subscribe to Keith Cooks, become a patron on Patreon, make a donation through PayPal. Any or all of those things would be most welcome. So, prawn cocktail, coming right up. Before we start, if you don't have any wonderful homemade mayonnaise, you're going to need to make some because the sauce is the one thing that really makes prawn cocktail special. So, uh, and the sauce is actually homemade mayonnaise and <laughs> actually Heinz tomato ketchup. Don't bother trying to make your own ketchup. You can do, but ain't the same. Uh, there's other stuff as well. Right, so it's actually been a very long time since I showed you how to make mayonnaise. And I'm not an expert, but what I do is a stick blender all in one method. And I'm afraid if you haven't got a stick blender, you can't do this particular version of how to make mayonnaise because it all depends on the diameter of that and the diameter of your container which comes with the stick blender and also a very high speed whizzing. If, if you can whiz a very high speed by hand, good luck to you. <laughs> anyway, what we need, we need oil. I'm going to use two thirds sunflower oil and one third Evo. You could use all olive oil if you want, but use a light one, not that. It's uh, too strongly flavoured. One egg, teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of white wine vinegar, and half a teaspoon of salt. Maybe more later, but we'll start off with half a teaspoon. So we just want to pop all of the ingredients into this. The egg, the vinegar, the salt. Mustard. This is my brand new bottle of olive oil. Ooh, I, I should have kind of pre mixed these a bit, but I haven't, so pop, just pop everything in and leave it for a couple of minutes to settle. So place your stick blender firmly over the egg and then turn on the motor for 10 to 15 seconds without moving the stick at all, and it should start to emulsify. And once that's happened, you can then raise the blender up and down through the mayonnaise and in a matter of moments it should all become lovely white creamy mayo. Well, that was a bit magical and the reason I'm looking so chuffed is because that is the first time I've used that particular recipe and in fact ever since I got this new stick blender I've not been able to make my nails because no, well not with this because it kept splitting the old version I was using depended on a slow dribble of oil to start with but with this 
well, I mean, it's just amazing. Mm -mm -mm. So, oh, oh wow, oh that is fantastic. That needs to go into a jar and it will keep for a few weeks in the fridge. Except it won't because we'll have ate it all. So the Mary Rose sauce, nobody really knows where the name comes from, but Fanny Craddock, eccentric British TV cook from the like the 50s, does get mentioned quite a lot in connection with this. So basically it's five or six tablespoons of tomato ketchup, Heinz, one tablespoon of your lovely homemade mayonnaise, a teaspoon of brandy, a couple of splashes of Tabasco sauce, and a sprinkling of paprika. Oh, that doesn't go in there, but this does. A teeny little dribble of lemon juice. So we'll make up the sauce first. Lots of mayonnaise. I'll just guess this, it's supposed to be a tablespoon, like that. All right, that's those mixed up. Now we'll add a teaspoon of cognac, or brandy. And a few drops of Tabasco and a squeeze of lemon. The paprika goes on after. Okay. <laughs> mm, that's pretty good. I think it could stand a bit more hot stuff. It's very tempting to also throw in things like, whoops, Worcester sauce, Hendo's, or even fish sauce would be fantastic in this. But we're trying to stick to the authentic, old fashioned recipe. Right, now I've got 200 grams of cooked, peeled prawns, uh, king prawns. That's what we call them in England. Depending where you are, you might think they're shrimps, but English shrimps are tiny little brown things. They're not what you want to ask for. I'll save half a dozen to drape around the edge of the glass and the rest of them I'll mix in with the sauce. Now traditionally you would serve this in champagne cups or you know wide cocktail glasses. We haven't got any. I meant to get some but I forgot. So I'm going to use these chunky old wine glasses and that's lovely because we get lots in. So vegetation we've got a little gem lettuce, half cucumber, a spring onion from our garden and they just need to be dealt with. I'm going to have a couple of little gem leaves in their entirety just to kind of build buttresses around the side of the glass and then we really want the heart of the lettuce so take all these leaves away. They will get used, worry not. So you just want to shred it. Now I finally chop the spring onion Pop that in a bowl with the uh, shredded lettuce and then a cube. So I'll just cut that in half and take out the extremely wet CD core and finely dice that as well. Righty ho, final assembly time. So I've got a glass, got a slice of lemon dangling on the end, and we'll put in our lettuce buttresses and just put your salady bits in we might have quite a lot more than is needed and now your actual prawns in their sauce so there's too much sauce here and I, I need to kind of not put all of it in now we just want a little sprinkling of paprika a decorative slice of lemon and your two leftover prawns for each one. And in fact, if you'd got them shell on, you would leave the shell on for those bits. Because it makes it look wonderful. But anyway. anyway, I didn't get shells. Right, there we go. Prawn cocktail. Da -da. <laughs> and now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keepcox. And we're a bit discombobulated because we did the whole flouncing in and stuff. And um, he forgot to switch the camera on. So that's why you're looking at. <laughs> You can see we started without you. <laughs> <laughs> so, summary, I love it, she hates it. No, I don't hate it, but I do think that I can see why it sort of went out of fashion. I'm just surprised it was in fashion in the first place, because the 
prawns are lovely and the sauce is very nice. I mean, I like mayo, but... There's all green stuff at the bottom, you'll love that. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think I'd be inclined actually to take this out and put it on a piece of toast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, that was our taste test, such as it was. <laughs> so uh, it's, been, it's been fun, hasn't it? It's oh yeah. been like, you know, Aye. blast from the past. A blast from the past. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, and see you next time with possibly something else from the prawn cocktail. Yes! Yeah.